following lecture was produced by Glorian Publishing, a nonprofit organization, and is one of hundreds of lectures freely available via download, podcasts, streaming radio, and transcription. These lectures range in topic and complexity in order to address the many needs of humanity. We invite you to browse our library of lectures, books, courses, and articles to find teachings that suit you. Through the support of donations, Glorian Publishing has published 40 books, hosts international retreats several times a year, offers free online courses, and many other valuable resources, available to anyone worldwide. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Your donations make it possible for this free public service to reach thousands of people every day. To make a tax-deductible donation in any amount, even anonymously, visit GnosticTeachings.org. Now, with heartfelt wishes for the end of suffering for all creatures, we begin the lecture. May all beings be happy. The woman and the serpent. When you examine this uh, symbol, the serpent, you find it in many religions, in many myths, and of course, the serpent is related always with creation, with transformation. <coughs> In this lecture, we are going to go directly into the Bible, because Christianity and Judaism are referred to the serpent in many different ways. And uh, we should know what is the mystery of this uh, serpent that is always associated with the woman. From the beginning in the book of Genesis and in different... Uh, chapters, quotations in the New Testament as the former speaker explained in the lecture about Kundalini which is of course symbolized as a serpent and uh, in the Bible we find the first statement about the serpent and the woman in the chapter 3 of the book of Genesis. Of course, as we always state, uh, this is a Kabbalistic, alchemistic statement that uh, few people can understand because it is written in a very cryptic manner and is not easy to comprehend if we do not know the Hebrew alphabet as we always state. <coughs> to begin Uh, let us uh, remember that we state, or we stated in previous lectures uh, about uh, in relation with the Garden of Eden, that in Hebrew you find many words related with earth, 
ground, dust, and today we are going to talk about uh, another word which points to the same uh, topic, which is field, which is similar to ground, earth, and dust of the earth. As you know, earth is haretz, means the earth. Adama is ground. Efer is dust of the earth. And uh, uh, Shada or Sada or Sada is, of course, field. And when we name this uh, word, of course, we have to state that the word Shada or Sada in Hebrew has different meanings. Sometimes it says Shade, Shade, or Shada, Sada. It means breast to begin. It is written with the letter Shin, Dalet, and He. Shin, Dalet, and He. But of course, has different uh, modifications uh, after that. Shin, Dalet, and He. Shada. There is another word that we know, which is Shadai, which instead of He, we have the letter Yod. And of course, we form uh, from Shadai, that name uh, of God, which is Shadai El Hai. That's the sacred name that God uh, has or appeared before Abraham, before Isaac, before Jacob. Sometimes you said El Shaddai. That this Shaddai also could be Shad, Shad, the shade, they said all, all sometimes, right? The genie of, of Solomon. And this uh, word, Shaddai, Shed, or Shaddai, means breast, means demon, as well as devil. Fiend, goblin, gremlin, sprite, boggy, phantom, genie, ghost, goal, numb, hobgoblin, incubus, Mephistopheles, phantom, poltergate, spirit, their devil, etc. You might wonder, of course, uh, most of the common interpretation that we find is almighty. Because we always said that Shaddai el Hai means the almighty living God. That is the name, of course, given to God, to the Sephirah Yesod, which is the nine Sephirah of the tree of life. Now, for instance, let us uh, inquire about this Otz Haim in Hebrew that we, or that is always translated as the tree of life. Otz Haim. If you see, for instance, this word is also in the word. Shadai el Chai. Chai means life. It's written only with two words, I mean with two letters. The letter Het 
and the letter Yod, Hai, life. But for me, you write different words. And Shaddai el Hai, you said the Almighty Living God. But uh, we also have to understand that uh, the word or the name of God, which is Shaddai el Hai in Yesod, is the first uh, name of God that appears in Genesis. Uh, from Abraham, that God reveals to Abraham with his name. Because the name Yod He Vav He, Yod Chava, is uh, uh, appeared uh, with Moses. And all that, of course, had different meanings that we are going to inquire in order to comprehend what is the mystery of this serpent and the woman that we find, of course, uh, in the field, in Shada, as we said, in the breast. It's like a mystery there related with many things. Because really, this word Shada, or Shad Shade, or Shadai, Shadi, has many uh, uh, interpretations. And uh, El, as you know, in Hebrew, means God. The God of the fields. Sometimes it's translated that the God, uh, uh, the all-nourishing God. Because related to the breast. Yeah, women breast is shad. So, as you see, uh, everything is uh, pointing to a sexual matter here. Because Yesod, as we know, is, of course, related in the human organism with uh, uh, the sexual organs. And the breasts are the masculine sexual organs of the woman. But uh, this serpent that we are talking here appears... In the beginning of uh, chapter 3 of the book of Genesis, and it states like, like this, And the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field. And here we find, for the, in, the, in this verse, field which is Shada or Shadai. This obviously, this verse is pointing that the serpent was the most subtle animal in Yesod. Because in Yesod we find, of course, the origin of all of those uh, genii that we name of all life because Yesod is Shaddai El Chai and Chai is life. I said to you that the tree of life, for instance, is Otz Chaim. That between parentheses, Chaim is not life. Chaim is life. Plural. So the real, the, the real translation should be the tree of lives. Because indeed, every sephiroth above Yesod is an independent life. An independent land with life in different dimensions. That's why when you see a tree, you see many fruits. In that tree, or many branches. So, in other words, each branch, each fruit, is a, a, a separate life. That's why it's Od Haim. Because the uh, word, when it's ending in E-M, Haim, is plural. 
And of course, that's why we state, and we stated always, that the roots of the tree of life, or lights, are in Yesod. Because in Yesod we find the almighty living God. Shaddai el Hai. That relates, of course, as you see, Shad, Shadi, to many uh, interpretations, many names, even to the breast of woman. So, that is giving us, of course, a very broad view of what Yesod, the sexual energies, energy is. In many lectures, we state that Yesod is a manifestation of the energy of Bina. Bina is a third sephira, or the first triangle of this Oz Chaim, or Tree of Lives. Bina is the Holy Spirit. And uh, previously we said that Bina, his uh, sacred name, is Jehovah Elohim, or Jahava Elohim. That if you read in the verse that we are uh, spending here, it says, And the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which Yahava Elohim had made. So do you see the union there, the connection? Jahava Elohim made means the Holy Spirit, Bina, from, from this. Because in the Tree of Life we have to understand that the first triangle, Keter Homa Bina, is governed by Keter. The second triangle, Chesed Geburat Tifereth, is governed by Chochma. And the third triangle, Netzah, Hod, and Yesod is governed by Bina from the top. In other words, the three primary forces, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Keter, Homa, Bina, control the tree of life in the center. We will say, in other words, control the tree of life in the mist, which is always this word is, uh, uh, always appears in Genesis. In the midst of the trees. In the midst of the tree. Of course, in the midst of the tree is the central column of this hieroglyphic, the tree of life. In that central column we have Keter, Tifereth, and Yesod. And in the very bottom is Malkut. So, Keter governs above, Chochma governs in Tifereth, and Bina governs in Yesod. So that's why the Bible states, Jehovah Elohim made in the field. And this field, of course, is Yesod. Every time that you find the word field in the Bible, Shade, Shaddai, relates to Yesod. And sometimes it's related in different ways, but commonly is field. That field of battle or the field of Yesod. In which, of course, also you find that Cain killed Habel or Abel. He says that being in the field, Cain comes and kills Abel. What field? Of course, we is referring to Yesod. This is how you interpret and understand. Now, there is another word <coughs> that comes from Hai, which is life. As you know, Haim, lives. And is Hayot. You add only the letter Tav at the end, which is the letter T in English. Hayot. Sometimes uh, you add the letter H after the T in order to 
pronounce very well the word Hayot. What does Hayot mean? Means animals. Sometimes a little like beasts. There is a word, for instance, that we pronounce in conjurations and is Hayot Hakadosh. That means sacred creatures or sacred holy creatures or animals, in other words, which are symbolized by this uh, uh, prophet Ezekiel, by the ox, eagle, lion, and the men. Those are the four holy creatures, Hayot HaKadosh. So you see here that from Hai emerges Chaim, which is above, of course. The Sephiroth above Yesod and Chayot, which are below Yesod in this uh, example. Because it is written that when Jehovah Elohim made in Yesod the man, he made him with also animals. He says there's Hayot. So this Hayot emerges from Hai, from life, which is Yesod, which is a sexual energy, in other words. But as we read, we find that the verse first says, And the serpent... Nahash was more subtle than any beast, than any chayot of Shaddai, which Jehovah Elohim Bina had made. Of course, that means that Jehovah Elohim made all the chayot that you find in nature. And how did Jehovah Elohim make the chayot? you know very well, through the sexual energy. This is how the animals multiply. So, according to the previous lecture that we gave, we always state that Hayot, the animals, are the previous kingdom before the human kingdom. Even though we call ourselves human, but still we are hayot, intellectual hayot, or intellectual animals, as we say it in, in, in books. So, of course, in Malkut, the earth, Haaretz, we find all the hayot, whether they are irrational or rational. And all of them are made in the field of Yesod. All of them are made by Shaddai el Hai, which is the almighty living God, or the power of, 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 of God in the sexual organs. So, of course, when the, we are in the circle of evolution, we know that as souls, we come from the mineral kingdom, into the plant kingdom, and into the animal kingdom. Then into the animal kingdom is where, of course, we start developing the body of desires. The body of desires that are, or that is, I mean, manipulated by the archangels. In nature, in, in the fourth dimension, you find the angels, archangels, that are ministers of Jehovah Elohim that organize nature in different groups. And of course, the archangels organize the animals, and uh, the animals multiply through uh, fornication, as you know. Of course, 
the serpent, this Haya, this type of uh, force, is a sexual potency that is active in the animals. The serpent itself, as a symbol in Shadai el Chai, is the most subtle energy. As the verse says, the most subtle of all Hayot. Because indeed, we have in our physical body the inheritance of different animal forces that we brought from the animal kingdom. And the most subtle of all of them is the serpent, which is, of course, the sexual potency, the sexual force, which in the animal obey, of course, the instinct. Or the instinct obey this force in nature. So when we enter, of course, in the human kingdom, in the kingdom of Adam, we receive the commandment, you shall not eat from the fruit of the tree of good and evil. As we know is that, the sexual force, which relates to the serpent. Because when we talk about the sexual force, unquestionably, we had to talk about the serpent. Because in order to perform the sexual act, we need the serpent. We need the subtle force of the serpent. Now, in nature, there is, of course, uh, an archangel that controls this force specifically. All the archangels are related to this force, but specifically one. And is the archangel Samael. He is the one that uh, is related with this subtle force of sex. And that's why his symbol is always a serpent. You find the, the symbol of Samael, you find a serpent standing. And this serpent, of course, I repeat, is a force that he controls. Whether in the animal kingdom, among the Hayot, or whether in the human kingdom, um, uh, among the Haim, which are above. It depends. It's just a, it's, it's just a force. That's why when you uh, study Samael, in relation with nature and astrology, you find that it's related with two signs. The sign of uh, Arius, and the sign of uh, Scorpio. Scorpio, of course, is in Yesod. And it's a sign related with water. While Aries, related with the head, is in relation with fire. Of course, Scorpio, as you know, has a poison in the tail. It was said that, that the sexual force is a double force there in the Scorpio. But in the head is fire, related with the three primary forces, Keter, Chochma, Bina, the first triangle, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So the serpent that we always talk in different lectures is that energy which comes from the chakra Muladhara to the pineal gland. All of us know that. That's the famous Kundalini that awakes and goes up straight through the spinal column to the pineal gland. Of course, if you visualize it's coming from a Scorpio to Aries, and those both, both signs are ruled by Samael. That's why it is stated in alchemy, in esotericism, in Kabbalah. That Samael is the one that controls the serpent. And he acts through the serpent. It's not like Samael is the serpent. You understand that? Is that he works 
through the serpent. It's not like Jahava Elohim in the three primary forces works through lust in your soul. <coughs> is it like Jahova Elohim, which is in Bina, works through your soul as Shaddai El Hai? But it depends how we use that force. And remember that Jahava Elohim, Bina, the Holy Spirit, is related with the pineal gland. So you find there the relationship, of course, of the sign of Arius, which is the Lamb, which is associated with the Christ, and down there, in the sex, with the Scorpio, which is a sign of water, or the sexual force. And this uh, name, Yod Hava or Yah Hava, better to say now, Yah Hava. Yah is in the head, as we know, when we said, Hallelujah. We are pronouncing Yah, which is, of course, the higher level in, in, in Atsilus, which is Keter, the father. But the other part of Jah, Hava, is, of course, the other part is in the bottom, in Yesod. So when we name the God Jah Hava, Jah is the head and Hava is the sex. This Hava is Eve in English. And here, again, the word Hai, which is life. And it's written that Eve or Hava comes from Hai, which is life. That's why it says, your name says Adam to Hava, the sexual organ, will be Hava. Because Hava is the mother of the living, Hai, mother of Hai. So behold here. The names associated with life, Hai, Hayot, animals, Haim, lives, from above, Hava, Eve, which is the first woman that appears associated with the serpent. Because, of course, the serpent talks to the woman. And becomes a very friendly uh, element of the woman. But this woman, of course, that we're talking here, as we said in many lectures, is a symbol of the sexual organs. Uh, we know also, of course, that the woman is Hava as well, physically speaking. But we go directly into the book of Genesis, to the mysteries of that. We have to specify things. That this Hava or Eve that the book of Genesis talk about, the mother of the living, is a sexual organ. And uh, this is how we understand that. Because from the sexual organ, whether from the man, from the woman, whether from, from animals, even from plants, comes life, Hai. So when we are going into this, of course, we remember, or I remind you, that in the previous lectures about the Garden of Eden, we state that Malkut, the physical body, together with Yesod, is the Garden of Eden. So when we talk about this Garden of Eden in relation with the microcosmos, in relation with us, we have to understand that we have to keep talking about us. And when the serpent appears, it's not an animal outside, but inside of us. In other words, this higher life is energy that manifests in different levels. And that appear in Malkut in different animals. This is why we have to understand. This Haya, which is Hayot animals, 
appears in a bull, in a lion, in an eagle, in a fish, in different levels, in different animals. And each one of them is uh, channeling different life forces from nature. But in the physical body, our physical body, which is our own particular nature, our own particular Eden, we have all of those forces as energies. We have all of those hayot, in other words. And this is what we have to understand. Now, when the Bible says, and the serpent, because many translations says, now the serpent, like telling a a tell, right? But the real translation is and the serpent because the first letter that appears in that verse is the letter Bav. So when you will read and the serpent, immediately when you associate that to your microcosmic element, which is you, you put the, your, your, your concentration, your mind, your imagination in your spinal column. Because that's the letter Vav in you. And that's why we have stated that the book of Genesis always starts with and or the letter Vav. So and the serpent means the spinal column and Vav the snake. He's talking something that is related with the spinal column. But in the field or in the chakra muladhara, which is related with the yasod. He's not talking about the spinal column on the head or in the middle. He's talking in the field, Shaddai. So the serpent was the most subtle energy in Shaddai, in the in Yesod, among the Hayot. Because, of course, we have all the other subtle energies that go into Yesod. Behemoth, for instance, which is pure fire here in that area, goes there as well. Because the sexual energy, all the energy that we have in the body, relate to many subtle forces. But you know that the more subtle life force that we have in the physical body is the sexual potency. So therefore, when you are in the sexual act, there is the most subtle force, the force of the serpent, which is, as we always state in Latin, Lucifer. Lux, fire, and fair, carrier. The carrier of the light force. That's the meaning of Lucifer. The carrier of the life force. The carrier of Shaddai el Hai. That's the most subtle force that manifests in the physical body, in our, in our own Adama, but in the field of Yesod, in Shaddai. And this is how the serpent tempt Hava, the sexual force, our own Eve, in other words, tempted. it. How? Is the serpent tempting Chava by the sexual impulse that we feel in the very moment when we want to perform the sexual act? That's why it is stated in the book of Genesis that Yahavah Elohim, Bina, the Holy Spirit, in the Garden of Eden, in the physical body, said to the soul, from the tree of good and evil, which is sex, you shall not eat from it, not even touch it. Because the day that you eat from it, you will die. In other words, do not extract the life force of your sexual organs. Why? Because the word hai begins with het. You see, the letter het is made with two letters. The first letter in the right is vav. 
and the other in the left is Zain. That makes the letter Het, which is similar to the letter He, because the letter Het is, of course, touching the top, but the letter He doesn't touch. So that letter Het. You see the, the, the letter He that we always talk on the name Yod, He, Vav, He, is like this. doesn't touch the top. But the head touch it. Because there are two letters. The letter Vav and the letter Zain together. Plus the letter Yod is high life. And the letter head is associated with the two polarities. Man and woman. Vav in this case is masculine and Zain is feminine. So Zain, the letter Zain and the letter Bab together united made the letter Het which you pronounce Hai which is life. In other words the life is in the spinal column. Many times we said that the tree of life Chaim is a spinal column because it depends on these two polarities the man and the woman the man is Vav the woman is Zain so when we talk about the tree of life Chaim we see immediately the letter Het the two polarities that in Sanskrit are called Ida and Pingala, Od and Ov, Adam and Eve. These two forces emerge from Chai, from Shadail Chai, which is Yasod, and nourished the tree of life. So when we said any master, any prophet, any holy person is always chaste. Because from Shadai el Chai, which is Yesod, the sexual force, he nourishes Chai, the life, which is the spinal column. The two polarities that come from his testicles or ovaries. And that's the Chai. In the middle, of course, of this high life, the spinal column, in which you find Ja Hava, which is in the midst of the trees. When you read in the Bible that Jahava Elohim was in the midst of the trees, do not think that it is a spirit or a ghost there outside in nature. Because the people that do not understand the meaning of these words, they write, and Jehovah Elohim was among the trees. Instead of in the mist, they wrote among, means of course, like any deer or any lion there in the trees, you know, in the forest, in the woods. But it's not that the meaning of it. The meaning is that this Jehovah, as we explain, Ja is in the pineal gland and Hava is in the sexual organs. United, Jahava Elohim is precisely the fire or the column of fire in the spinal column. Rising. Hmm? Giving life to Adam the brain and Hava the sex. And of course this is in any prophet. That's why it is stated that any prophet is a prophet of Jah Hava. There is not a single prophet in the world that is not a prophet of Jah Hava. Because in order to be a prophet, you need to rise the serpent from Hava to Jah, the brain. And when that serpent is risen, and then we have Jah Hava. 
So then when we talk, the prophet is a prophet of Jahaba. It's not a person outside there, you know, in heaven as people think. It's inside of you. It's a fire. It's high. But this is a process, of course, in which you have to rise, Shaddai el Chai, the life of your, or the feel of your sod, which is God, up to the brain, in order to become a Jehovah Witness, a real one. Because you become a witness of that fire that rises in your spinal column with just TT. That's a master, that's a prophet, a real avatar, a messenger, an angel in other words. Because the two polarities, Bab and Zain, are standing. As you see, both resemble a serpent standing. Ida and Pingala, all and off. But there's another word here that also we like to inquire in the Bible. And it is the word Zari or Zara. But the word is Zara. How do you write Zara? With Zain. You see this is the word Zain. And then the letter Resh. And then the letter Ayin. Do you remember that Ra means evil? In Hebrew, in order to say it, semen, seed, you, find, you write it with, you take the word Ra, which is evil, and you put Zain in the beginning of that word, and it's Sara. And Sara is your seed. So, in other words, behold here how the letter Zain, which is associated with the woman, is also associated with Ra, with evil. But Sara means the seed, the semen, the sexual seed, whether in the woman or in the man. So, of course, now you understand why the serpent tempted Eve, Chava, and the serpent doses through the seed. And it's easy to understand, because when the woman, which means when the sexual organ takes from the fruit, when the serpent is tempting her, which is nothing but the sexual urgent, Urge, I mean, the sexual desire, the animal desire, which is very subtle in you. You reach the spasm, the orgasm, through your hava. And then, of course, you said, who gave you that fruit? And then your hava says, well, was the sexual desire, was the sexual impulse, was the serpent, the most subtle hayot. In the sexual organ, in Yesod. He gave me the impulse. And I couldn't control the orgasm. So I ate. But there is another thing in the Bible. When Jehovah Elohim, the Holy Spirit. Is going inside in the midst of the trees. You see. It means in the midst of the spinal column. He finds there is no fire there. It's gone. And then he asks Adam, where are you? Oh, I'm hidden in this, the midst of the, of the trees, he says. I'm hidden in the midst of the trees. Because I'm naked. I mean, that fire is gone because of the orgasm. Did you eat of the fruit, of course? And he says, yeah, the woman, the sexual organ. But you gave me in my body, offered me that fruit, and I ate. Of course, the consequences of the orgasm touch the brain. And then, Jahava Elohim, which is that fire that was standing in the spinal column, goes down into sex. 
and talk to the, to the sexual organ, which is the woman. What did you do? Is the question of that fire. And the woman said, well, the serpent tempted me, and I ate. And you know the story. But it doesn't say, and I ate. And I am eating. And Adam says, well, I am eating the fruit. It doesn't, it, this means that after the orgasm, we continue eating the, the fruits of desire. It's not a thing that happened in the past that people think, oh, whether that symbolizes Lemurian humanity, whether that symbolizes the past, that happened in the past. We ate the fruit. He says, no, it's, it doesn't happen in the past. It's happening in the present. Because we told you that the Garden of Eden is a physical body. And when that fire enters into our physicality, we always say, yes, I am eating the fruit of desire. And the sexual organ says, yes, the serpent gave me the fruit and I am eating the fruit. Because we eat from it every single day. Because lust was the origin of it and then the other defects of desire. And that is feeding it always. That came, that came as an outcome of that fall. But let us continue reading this and, goes, and go now into the verse 15 of the same uh, chapter 3. Where it is written. And, you see, again, the letter Vav, which means N in Hebrew. And, I will put enmity between thee. Who is thee here? It's, a, it's talking to the serpent. Thee, the subtle force of Yesod. And the woman. Which is of course the energy related with procreation, the sexual organs. And between thy seed. And her seed. So we find here two seeds. The seed of the serpent, which is the fallen serpent, and the seed of the woman. You might think that he's referring to Eve and the serpent. No. Enmity between you and the woman says, not Eve. The woman means the woman that fear Jehovah, that obeys Hava. Obeys Jehovah, I mean, that obeys the Lord, that follow the path. In other words, the sexual organ that is dedicated to chastity. I will put enmity between you and, and this woman. Not to Eve, as many people think, <coughs> that the serpent is now a, a, in, in between a, an enmity with Eve. It is not an enmity because to begin, they are very close friends. Right? The serpent offer, offer the fruit to Eve and Eve takes it and fornicates. And he says, oh, this is good, is what he, it is written there. Good to my eyes. So in other words, Eve becomes a friend of the, of the tempting serpent. Hmm? And this is what we have to understand and comprehend. That the statement that is written in the, the verse 15 refers to another woman. Not to Eve. Because if we investigate that Hava, that Eve, that sexual organ, in every single individual in this planet Earth, we'll find that that sexual organ is a very close friend of the serpent. Because everybody fornicates. Everybody enjoys the spasm and the orgasm. So the sexual organ, Eve, Hava, and the fornicator, is a very close friend of the serpent, of the tempting serpent. 
But of course, in this uh, verse of Genesis, Jehovah Elohim is telling or predicting that in order for us to get out from that state, we have to follow the woman, the woman serpent, which is above. That energy of Kundalini, which is the mother of the living. Because when that sexual organ repents and starts transmuting the sexual energy, that Chava, that sexual organ, transforms into a chaste woman. And that's why you find that there is always enmity between the seed of the serpent of fornication and the seed of the woman of chastity. In, e in each one of us. That's why in Gnosticism we teach that there are two serpents. The Kundavafer organ which is a tempting serpent of Eden, which is a, a, a very close friend of fornicators, and the Kundalini, which is a brazen serpent that healed the Israelites in the wilderness, and that Moses lifted up in the wilderness. Remember that in the New Testament, in the Gospel of John, it is written that Master Jesus, when talking to Nicodemus, this great rabbi, he told him, and as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, in the same manner, the Son of Man has to be lifted up. Of course, if we investigate, what is this serpent that Moses lifted up in the wilderness, and that the Son of Man has to lift to, it, to be lifted up in the same manner? Who is this Son of Man then? Of course, the Son of Man is Tifereth, the human soul that was killed by Cain in the beginning. Because remember that after the fall, Adam knew Hava. In other words, it's written there that Adam knew Hava, knew how Hava knew evil. And Hava gave him the fruit of that and was Cain. Cain, of course, not going outside, but always inside of ourselves, psychologically, physically speaking, is the mind, the mind that knows evil. But also this Hava gave birth to Abel, which in this case referred to the same element. Cain is a mind and Abel is a soul that now knows good and evil because of Cain. But it's very weak. But it's a shepherd. When you find that Abel is a shepherd, means that he's dedicated to the work of God, of Jehovah. Unfortunately, we find here the first enmity between the two seeds. Cain is the seed of the serpent. Because through the ejaculation of Sarah, the evil, Cain knows now evil. And because of that, he kills Abel in the field. So when you find that, Abel, uh, that Cain killed Abel, in the field, 
immediately you have to associate that to Yesod. It's in the sexual organ. Because Cain is the outcome of desire. Cain is lust, anger, envy, greed, gluttony, laziness. All of that, that people in this day and age worship. They worship Cain. Because they worship the serpent. Why do you, do you, uh, do you expect that this humanity will worship God when they worship the serpent? And it's not that they have a serpent there in their living room made of, uh, of any metal or whatever, and they are worshiping. No, no, no. When I say that they worship the serpent, it means that they worship sexual orgasm, which is the outcome of the tempting serpent, because their Chava loves it. So therefore, if they love that they love the outcome, which is also Cain, which are all the defects and vices that we have, which is the ego. This is why this society worship the ego, worship the desire, sexual desire, but they think that we are children of God. No, the truth is this, we are children of the serpent. We are children of the serpent of desire, of the Kundabafer. Because we were created in the sexual act through the orgasm. So, if we said, we are children of God, sorry, we are not Chaim, we are Chayot. You see the difference? The mother of the living, of course, Chaim, as Master Jesus says, God is God of the living, which is Abraham, which is Isaac, which is Jacob. Both of them, of course, or the three of them, represents the monad. Chaim, above. But all of us are children of the devil, which is the same serpent. The sexual sensation, sexual desire, which creates hayot. How does a cat is created? Through the sexual desire. Because any animal in this animal kingdom procreates through the serpent of desire. But the animal doesn't know. This is only obey desire and creates and multiply because it's a hayot. But we know already the doctrine and we keep multiplying ourselves as hayot. Because we ejaculate the seed, which is the serpent, tempting serpent. So then, Cain killed Abel, the soul in other words. And the soul has to resurrect. Because what's the point? Abel is inside of us, dead, completely dead within the elements of Hayot. Abel is trapped in that Haya. This is singular for animal, because Hayot is plural. Haya, the animal, is lust. So Abel is trapped there. Anger, which is another Haya, trapped all another part of Habel. So Habel is divided in many parts which is Hayot, is dead. And that's why Master Jesus says, God, Jehovah Elohim, is not a God of dead, but a God of the living. And the division of that God of the living and of the dead is here. Because in, the, in Malkut, which is the will of Zamzara, Everything is subject to death. All Hayot die. This physical body that we have is a Haya. Hayot. It will die sooner or later. Because what's created in, through the orgasm. To find in this physical world a physical body of a person 
that was not created through the orgasm is the most difficult thing that you can ever uh, find. There might be someone that was born not in that way, but it's, it's not easy. So you find there, of course, that that's the first enmity between us. Our soul is dead, and the sexual organ, the serpent, keeps doing the same thing, killing the soul. So we are in a dilemma. Stop fornicating in order to, st in order to start giving life to our own Abel and go ahead. Through initiation, as you know, as we explain, the Bible explains, that there is a, another enmity between the seed of the serpent and the seed of the woman that follows the path of chastity. In this case, you find Sarai, the wife of Abraham. That's the first enmity that we find in which she finds enmity between her and Agar, which is Malkut, the Egyptian. Agar gives birth to Ishmael, which is the outcome of the serpent, because Abraham is having a child with the slave of Egypt, which means the slave of Malkut. But Sarai, or Sarah, gives life to Isaac, which rises in the spinal column that we explain, is that soul that we had to re resurrect through initiations. So you find there the, the first enmity, or we will say the second, in which Sarah, that represents the woman, that is following the law of God, gives birth to Isaac. But before that, Agar, which is the slave, gives birth to, to Ishmael. So you find there the two, uh, the two seeds, the seed of the serpent and the seed of the woman, the chaste one. And continue in the path of initiation, you find that Rebecca, the wife of Isaac, in another level of initiation, also creates another enmity. From her womb comes twins, which is Jacob and Esau. And as you know, it is written uh, uh, that Esau was the seed of the serpent. But it's inside of us. This Esau is a hunter. In the field of Yesod. While Jacob, that symbolizes the human soul, of course, follows <coughs> the, the seed of the woman, Rebecca. In this case, the, the woman has that conflict, which is a sexual organ, has that conflict uh, in each one of us, in the initiation. When you go up trying to recuperate your heavenly estate or your Edenic state, you do it in steps. It's not happening mechanically or automatically like many people think. First, you recognize that you have Cain in your head. And that this Cain killed your soul, which is Abel. Now, knowing that, that, that this enmity exists within you because of the serpent, then you start working in the initiation. And then you realize that there is another division between you of Ishmael, which represents the person that understands this knowledge, that studied this doctrine, but is just 
like any one of us that read the book or know the doctrine, but it is dead because it's in, in this, uh, on top of that we know it, we know the doctrine, we have to practice it in order to give chance to our own particular Sarai, which is the, the woman, the woman that is the, the, the divine mother, in other words. And Isaac is born in us. And then we have the, the duality there, the experience of the direct knowledge, the experimental knowledge in you, which is experienced with your soul, and the knowledge that you have, which is literal, intellectual, and that you have faith in it. That is Ishmael in you. But there are many people in this uh, world that know a lot the Bible, or a lot Kabbalah, or a lot of the doctrine of God, which is good, but that is Ishmael. And God doesn't want anything to do with Ishmael. He wants his pact with Isaac. But Isaac is a practical fire that comes from Yesod up to your spinal column in the first initiation. And he's a son of Sarah. He's not a son of Agar. So you see these two pacts. One to study the doctrine and the other to practice the doctrine. It is not the same as a, a a hearer of the word that a doer of the word. Of course, after that division comes another one, Jacob and Esau, which is another step in you, in which you find the force on your sexual organ that wants the satisfaction of desire, which is Esau. But then Jacob inside of you, that is that element that wants to satisfy the longings of the spirit. This is another level. And when you conquer that level, you enter in another level of Joseph, in which, which is related with your astral, emotional body. And likewise, you enter, as we explain, always this uh, enmity between the two seeds. Because remember that uh, Rachel, which was the wife of, uh, of uh, Jacob, was also uh, a woman that was difficult to procreate, sterile. Jacob had other women, but Rachel was difficult to procreate. Finally, she gave birth to Joseph and Benjamin, only two, which relate, of course, to other aspects that we are developing and entering after we go into the different levels of developing of this enmity between the serpent and the woman. So the woman itself represents four steps, as we explain in other lectures. Finally, we reach the level of Moses. And Moses, you know, is being born also from a priestess from Le, Le, the, the tribe of Levi, and also a priest from the tribe of Levi. So, of course, this priestess is that woman also that is conquering the serpent. And this is stated that that woman will step on the head of the serpent, which is going down, of course. And the last uh, step between this serpent and the woman is, of course, uh, written in the Gospels of Jesus Christ. When the woman appears and is already holy, but that is when the initiate reaches the fifth initiation of Mayor Mysteries, with all the bodies are already kadosh. When we said, Hayot Ha Kadosh, all the bodies, which is the physical body, the uh, vital body, the astral body, the mental body, and the causal body, are already holy. Those are Hayot Ha Kadosh, holy creatures. When those bodies are already holy, when there is now not uh, uh, any uh, falling element in that 
soul, then appears the virgin, the woman, that already conquered the serpent in certain level. And then is the Virgin Mary, which is represented in the mother of Jesus, which is Yeshua, the Savior. And that woman, of course, gave birth to the Savior. But there is a very high level in which the woman is already up conquering the serpent. But that is inside. It's not outside. It's inside of us. Because this Yeshua, the Christ, is Chokhmah that is coming and unites her, uh, himself with the soul. But is being born through that woman that conquered already from the bottom to the top. That woman that reaches the level of Tifereth. That woman that is, of course, Sarah. That woman that is Rebecca. That woman that is Rachel. That woman that is the, priests, the priestess of Levi that gives birth to Moses. That woman is transforming herself through our own initiatic work into the Virgin Mary. So when that woman becomes the Virgin Mary, she's ready. She's pure virgin in all our nature. And then gives birth to Jesus Christ within. This Jesus Christ, of course, is the one that already conquered the serpent and has to annihilate the consequences of that serpent, which appear in the drama, the drama of uh, the passion of, of, of Christ. If you remember in the Gospel of John, that woman, that virgin, appears in the weddings of Cana. When Jesus is invited to this wedding, and the mother of Jesus, which is Mary, tells him, they have no wine. Referring to the couple, that they are just newly, newly wed, and they are not transmuting yet. Like telling to Jesus, do something in, in their favor. And the answer of Jesus is, woman, what do you have to do with me? Or in other words, what you have to do with me, which is the annihilation of all the defects and vices that we had to disintegrate in order to reach perfection, that hour is not yet come. Because they are just the newly wed. They have to rise their Abraham, they have to raise their Isaac, their Jacob, their Moses. They have to reach that level in order for me to act. This is what Jesus is saying there. But of course, uh, the Master Jesus teaches there that in order to reach that level, they have to transmute the sexual force, the water, into wine, which is the fire. So they, that's why he says, woman, what do you have to do with me? My hour is not yet come. What is that hour? The hour of the Savior is not by reaching or lifting the, the arm aloft and says, I believe in Jesus. That is not the hour of the Savior. The hour of the Savior comes after Moses. The hour of Moses comes after uh, Joseph. And the hour of Joseph comes after Jacob. And the hour of Jacob comes after Abraham. I mean, after Isaac. And the hour of Isaac comes after Abraham. You see, hours are times of initiation in which you have to work with these archetypes. So the last archetype, the final archetype, that you have to work with the woman, the force of the woman, is Jesus Christ. That's why after Jesus Christ, this is it. 
there is no more to say. Because he's, he's the final archetype. There is a savior in us that we have to develop. But before reaching that hour of Jesus, we have to purify our own particular matter, which is our own virgin. So the Virgin Mary had to give birth to Jesus Christ. That is the hour, the transformation. And that's why it is associated with what Jesus said to Nicodemus. As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, the Son of Man has to be lifted up as well. Now, in many lectures, we explained that Moses is the symbol of the body of willpower, the body of Tifereth. That Tifereth began from the bottom. Moses resurrected in Abraham. Moses resurrected in Isaac. Moses resurrected in Jacob. Moses resurrected in Joseph. And finally appears as the body of willpower as Moses. So the resurrection of Moses, in other words, is the resurrection of Abel. The soul that was killed now is resurrecting. And that's why Moses controlled the serpent. What is the first miracle that Moses does with the help of Jehovah Elohim? Jehovah Elohim says, take that stick, which is the symbol of the bath, the spinal column. And, and he takes it and transform the staff into a serpent. And the serpent becomes the staff, which is the letter Vav. Mean, this means that Moses already is controlling the tempting serpent of Eden. He already conquered Ra, evil. And therefore, he is ready to the, the, the next step. There are people here that think that they are doing good, doing well. Meanwhile, they are slaves of, this, of the tempting serpent because they are slaves of desire. They perform the orgasm. Their Eve, their sexual organ, enjoy the fruit. They are very close friends with the serpent, the tempting serpent. But Moses lifted that serpent, which was fallen, in the wilderness. And in the same way that Moses did it, the Son of Man has to be lifted up. And then uh, it says the, the teaching of uh, Jesus. And he says, and be wise as a serpent. Meaning that you have to rise that the wisdom of the serpent is chastity when you follow chastity. And meek as a dove. And that dove is a symbol of the Holy Spirit. Jehovah Elohim. Bina. So being, as being wise as a serpent and meek as a dove, we become a prophet. And we reach the, the last level when that woman, which is our own particular individual mother inside of us, conquered the serpent and gave birth to Jesus. And then Jesus is being born in us as a savior and he start doing the hard work which is the annihilation of the evil consequences of the tempting serpent. Because that's the, the main work of the Savior. The Savior wants to save our soul completely. And for that, he has to annihilate Pilate, the demon of the mind, Caiaphas, the, evil of evil, the demon of evil will, and Judas, the demon of desire. All these three demons were born in Shaddai, you see, that's the meaning of the word Shaddai, demon, devil. So from Shaddai is born the devil, and from Shaddai is born the angel. It depends how you use the sexual energy. So Jesus comes and annihilates that through the initiation, which is the eight Venustic initiations. And then this is how the Savior comes from the woman. And of course, he has to eliminate the evil seed of the serpent. That evil seed of the serpent 
is lust, anger, pride, envy, gluttony, laziness, greed, etc., etc. This is how. This is why he goes to the cross, goes into hell to annihilate that, and resurrects completely clean, with no evil, with no, no defects at all. You see, that's the whole work of the serpent and the woman. The seed of the serpent and the seed of the woman. It's a, a long process that begins in Genesis and ends with the resurrection of Jesus Christ and even the ascension. So the whole story is there, written, of course, in a cryptic, symbolic manner. That's why Master Zamael Veor said, in the Hebrew words, wisdom is hidden. So if you know how to read the Hebrew words and the meaning of each letter, you know that you are working with life. Chai, Chayot, Chaim, Chava, and the serpent all the time. Because that serpent is always there tempting you to do the contrary. And if you conquer it, temptation is fire. The triumph of the, of the temptation is light, is lux, is luxifer. That's why the Savior itself is Christus Lucifer. The work in Shaddai, the field of Yesod. All the work is there. Do you have questions? The question is, is if we had to give uh, a quickly an explanation about Excalibur, but really that's not a matter of this uh, related with the, the lecture. Yeah, we can give, and we can give a, a lecture about it. And I know that uh, movie is very exciting. And of course, it also hides a lot of, a lot of wisdom. But uh, let us concentrate in this Hebrew mythology, because we're talking about Hebrew mythology, right? which is related with a serpent. Remember that all the great masters in the Hebrew pantheon, beginning with Moses that wrote the book of Genesis, he was a serpentine master. Ending with Jesus, that was saying that in the same way that Moses lifted up the serpent, the son of man also has to be lifted up. So we find there the, the meaning of the two great masters. Judaism and Christianity. Yeah? Question back here. It says, how else can someone be born in this earth if not by the orgasm in being manifested here on earth? How? What, what is the question? How else can someone be born in the, on this earth if not by the orgasm and being manifest here on earth? Okay. There are two... Uh, ways in order to be born in this earth. First, as Hayot, as the beasts, which are all of us. We are being born through the orgasm. But when you learn how to transmute the sexual force, there is another way, in which we call it scape. Because the individual acquires the power of releasing only one sperm, very mature, in order to engender the woman. And that is, of course, a type of birth, which is related, of course, uh, like the birth, the physical birth of Jesus Christ, that says that was being born from a virgin, physically speaking. That means that Mary, the mother, the physical mother, we are not talking about here in symbols, 
She was a priestess. And as a priestess, she performed a sexual act with Joseph, which was another priestess. Another priest, I mean. Remember, we're not talking here about the archetypes, symbolic archetypes. We're talking about the persons that existed 2,000 years ago. So Joseph and Mary performing a sexual act, Joseph releases only one sperm, and then the physical body of Jesus is the outcome. That is uh, uh, the birth through chastity, which is very rare, as I said. Most of the billions of people that are being born, even in the Gnostic couples, are the outcome of the tempting serpent. It's very rare to find a, a, a couple that has a, a, an outcome of chati, a child of chati, because all of us are children of, of, the, of desire, of the tempting serpent. It's always an enmity there. To be a priestess or a priest of high level, you can bring a higher soul. But uh, most of the souls that are being born, even of great masters, are fallen souls. Or oh, as we said uh, in other lectures, fallen bodhisattvas. And these fallen bodhisattvas are being born through the orgasm. Because they are fall into animal generation. Fallen into animal generation. Into the hayot. Yeah. Uh, when you said the wilderness, referring to um, Moses or even Jesus, are you referring also to Yasod? Yeah. The field. the field of Yasod is called also wilderness. And you work there in, uh, uh, by yourself. And which in the wilderness, of course, is where you have to face your own beasts, your own hayot. Because unfortunately, since we do not control our own particular hayot of living forces inside of our organism, we created a lot of hayot. As we said, anger is a haya, greed, gluttony, and all the different that we call ego, all of them together is hayot, beasts that we have within, behemoth. Right? So we have to, to face them in the wilderness. The, our own creation, in other words. And that's initiation. So as you see, uh, the woman and the serpent, of course, is a, an, a, an actual, an actuality, a fight that we had to perform uh, in the path of initiation. That tempting serpent that people call the devil and Shatan is inside of us. It feeds himself or itself through lust, anger, pride, and all the defects that we have within. And all of us are children of that serpent, of desire. Yes? In the tree of life, you saw it, the symbol of many things. But to begin, we were said that symbolizes the fourth dimension that we call Eden, that exists. It symbolizes sex as well, the sexual force in a man and in a woman. So you saw this foundation is the root of the tree of life and the root of the tree of knowledge, which is that. So you see, that is that sphere which is between the two triangles. Below the triangle of Ketejo, Mavina, and above the triangle of Chesed, Geburah, and Tiferet. And, and that is a mysterious sephira called that, which means knowledge, gnosis. That's the tap, literally with the head. So Yesod is the root also of that tree of good and evil, which is in, the, in sex. So the tree of life and the tree of good and evil share the roots in Yesod. So from Yesod, 
as we said in the beginning, comes Hayot, the beasts. From Yasot comes Haim, which are the living creatures, the superior sephirot, the human beings. And all of them comes from Hava, Eve, the sexual organ. Whether above or below, this is how the sexual force creates. Above and below. Chai, life. If there is not uh, other question, we invite you to study, keep studying the tree of life and the tree of knowledge in order to understand our origins. Because the origin of this humanity is in the sexual force. The origin of those animals is in the sexual force. The origin of the plants is in the sexual force. The origin of the whole planet is in the sexual force. Yesod. Thank you very much. To learn more about what you learned in this lecture, we invite you to explore the books published by Gloria and Publishing, available from booksellers worldwide. You may also be interested in online courses or upcoming retreats, all of which you can learn about at GnosticTeachings.org. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Will you help others to benefit from this knowledge? Most spiritual schools recommend a donation of $10 to $20 per lecture. Every donation helps. Make a donation now at GnosticTeachings.org. Thank you. May all beings be happy. Yeah,